Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In my last video and blog, I discussed about writing a small uh, or a hello world application uh, in .NET Core console and just running it inside a Docker container. Uh, today I'm going to uh, work in a practical problem that I have faced, uh, which is when you try to run a .NET Core console application in a continuous mode that is basically you are doing some background job where the console is running docker container just doesn't work uh, the way a console application would work so i'm going to show it demo it so that it's more clear on what i'm talking about so i'm just going to create a console application where i'm going to create a background thread and do a console.read line and wait for a um, user input to close the application. Um, so when I run this application in a normal console mode in a Windows, uh, you can see that it works fine. But if I do the same thing in Docker, it'll just die. Uh, and the reason is uh, console to to tell Docker to listen to console and not to act on it. Uh, it's a little bit different and that's what I'm going to um, try it out today. So let's start. Uh, first I'm going to just create a task. I'm going to keep the same application and then uh, add on top of it. And uh, I'm also going to share this code in my blog. Uh, the link will be below in the description. So as you can see, I just expanded the project uh, or the class, uh, the uh, main method to create a new task and which will run as a background task. And I'm just doing a, a console.write of the count and I'm just uh, sleeping. Oh, okay, I have to do a loop here. Yeah, so I'm just doing a while true, which is a bad practice. We should never do while true, but just for the demonstration, I'm just showing it here. Uh, created and continuously running. Uh, um, basically, this task will continuously run in the background. It'll sleep for a second, and then it'll continue back 
and just keep uh, increasing the count and writing it so I'm just going to run it in uh, the windows and then we'll see that how it works then I'm going to create the image in docker and then uh, we will create a container and run it there and see how it works there so here we can see it is working as expected we have a hello docker world which is the first console and then uh, the console after uh, console dot right after the um, task factory is written the press any key to cancel and then it started counting up and it is uh, putting the count every uh, second that's what is going on so i'm going to close this and i'm going to create a container here uh, first the image and the con then the container and if you have gone through my uh, previous video uh, you would know that I already created a docker file for that uh, and um, there's nothing to change here is the same docker file so if you go through my previous video and the blog I have explained about this uh, docker file there and this is going to remain the same nothing is changing here I have to first go to the project folder I'll just go through repos because if you have seen my previous video you might have seen that I created the solution on the one level up and uh, the solution file has to be always in the same folder as the docker file which is explained in my previous videos. I'll be just here and then start the docker build. So at this point I'll create the docker image and I'll use the docker build command. So my image is being built. yeah so it's successful now at this point I'm going to check the image has been created yeah the docker demo is created now I'm just going to go ahead and create a container and I can see the container is created and uh, yeah next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the container and just like the last demo I'm going to start it in interactive mode so that we can see the uh, console uh, right lines
and we can see it printed hello world it printed cancel key by the time it printed one current count but before it could proceed it just came to console.redline and closed the application so nothing is happening right now so if I go to uh, docker ps I'll see that it's uh, closed now yeah we can see the status is exceeded 28 seconds ago and th that's a practical problem uh, I have faced so I'm going to show right now how we can make it work uh, so that we can run it continuously under docker uh, by the way we can also check the logs to see what all print actually happened so we can do that so here we can see it has printed out all the logs with the timestamp now let's get back to the solution so here what we are going to do is we have to listen to the uh, or add an event to the console for exiting and we won't exit until you know uh, event is been triggered so the way we'll do is we'll create a auto reset event So we create the auto reset event with initial status set to false and then um, so when we do uh, uh, I'll just get rid of this read line because it's not needed uh, so if I do so essentially at this point it will just continuously wait uh, for the event to be set uh, so at the same time we need something to set the event so we'll just say console dot uh, we'll listen to the cancel key press and then So we'll just listen to the key press event, uh, cancel key press, and if cancel uh, key is pressed, we'll just set the event, in which case it will come out of this wait one, and this console will close. So let let's try this out first. Let's try it out in Windows, and then we'll try it in Docker because we want to make sure both places it works consistently. That's that's the whole goal. So you can see it's working and since I pressed a key it just is next I'm going to run it in uh, control F5 mode and here we can see it's uh, continuously running so I'm going to just cancel it with Control C. And now I'm going to just create 
the Docker image once again. So I'll go Docker build. And uh, once the build is done, I'm just going to uh, start the container. Uh, sorry, create the container first. So, and we can see the new container is created. Next thing I'm going to just uh, run the container in interactive mode and now we can see that it is continuously running uh, without being disrupted only if I do a so now if I go back and do a docker log I can see it is continuously running so it has printed up till 23 if I do it again 28 so it's continuously running until unless I go and do a docker stop so I'm just going to go and stop it and now I do it's still 39 39 we can see that it stopped um, of course we can do a docker ps and you can see it's existed so this is a very important feature or or an important um, functionality because when we are creating a continuous running job which will monitor a queue or or a database pull a database or something like that it's very important that we have a continuous running uh, process and uh, I mean we can do it with a HTTP implementation but then you know we just have an HTTP which is not actually a web server just using for running a continuous background job doesn't make a lot of sense so creating a console and um, having it run continuously is a better solution and I think this helps with that so with that that should be it for today thanks everyone for watching this and if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave it in the comment section below. And uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks.